So, good afternoon. Uh, as you're starting to notice just now, uh, I am French by accent. And for those who saw my name, probably by accident because of some border issues. But anyway, I'm here to talk about incense and what we're doing. And uh, when I rehearsed that presentation, I decided to totally change it, as I often do, because of the tests that had been done with the wonderful folks here that enabled the technology and the display to be great. Uh, and I decided to start my presentation not with what the company is about and who I am and so on, or what awards did you win yesterday, by the way, at the I3A. No, I decided to start with pictures, uh, because this is all about images, so let's start with pictures. Uh, that, that is a typical picture that you can take outside, and uh, that picture reminds me and reminds you probably of experiences that you did. Yes, please, please bring the, the light down. Uh, that would be great. Uh, and before, you know, you would, you would take your pictures to, uh, to, 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 to the shop, and then you would wait for, for two weeks, and then you would come back, and then would come the emotion moment where you would open, you would flip the box, and expect a few, a few disappointments. And uh, the question was, how many disappointments would you have? And disappointments turned into more job or more work uh, because now you get, uh, after one weekend, you get your pictures back on your computer. And the question is, how many pictures do I have to work on? And how, how much time it will take me? And so how much time would it take you to make that picture from what it is here into what it is here? And I suspect most of you who are familiar with imaging, I don't know how many of you are working with Photoshop and or Photoshop tool are working on their pictures. How many of you think reasonable that going from there to here might probably take them five to ten minutes on very, very specific shadow and highlight tools until they get to the right, right result? It's, it's the feedback we get from professional photographers. Uh, so so that's, that's one of the problems we decided to, to, to tackle, uh, to make good pictures look even better, uh, but try to find a more effortless way uh, including in very, very tough lighting conditions. On, on, on this type of church pictures, uh, the EV range that you get between the brightest uh, lights and the dark areas close to the pillars uh, is huge. And, and the problem is how you fix that once it has been captured and how, you, how do you get to those details in, in, in the bottom without losing track and without washing out what was in the windows and, and the details in the windows. Same question, same adverse lighting question when you are doing indoor scenes or when you lend your camera to somebody else that does indoor shoots without any knowledge of what it is about shooting backlights. Uh, how do you get that back? How do you get those results back? And how much time do you need to do that? That's, that, that's my first question for you. Um, until now, the images I showed you were done with some of our, of our golden images. Uh, so I would like to show you a result of what, uh, what a photographer did with... Uh, our software, because it will be soon about our software. Uh, so he was taking that barn and uh, wanted to get it to there. And again, it took him, now I can give the answer, it didn't take him five minutes, it did not take him one minute, it took him one click. And he got that. So now, a few accurate, precise, great photographers in the audience might say, well, okay, that's nice. But I want, I want to show, I mean, I want to see real color because basically what you're doing, guys, is uh, highlights and shadows or brightness and contrast. But usually when you start working on brightness and contrast, you start messing up with the color gamut. You, you start shifting colors. And this is why the magic ones available in most software packages usually got to come back to manual sliding and manual knobbing because they always tend to mess up with, with your colors. And actually, the question was, was, was asked me, this question, show me color, show me flowers, was asked me by uh, an, a guy named Yves Faruja, who most of you know probably because of the tremendous contribution he made to the video industry in analog and then in interlacing and then in upscaling. And I was with Yves Faruja a few months ago uh, trying to validate and to assess the choice I was making as, to become the CEO of this company. And he said immediately, show me flowers. And I'm not a very expert photographer, so I said, well, why? But luckily enough, I had flowers that, had a, that I had been taken in Giverny, where Claude Monet used to have his flowers in his paintings. And so I said, well, okay, well, I think I have flowers. It was on my iPhone, actually. So I did the iPhone demo, demo and I got there. And he was amazed. 
And this is the day where I decided to join this company. So as you start to understand what we are about and what we are focusing on is the dynamic range problem. And as most of you know, um, the dynamic range problem is not a, a human problem. Our human eye actually has tremendous capabilities. And when it comes to the church, I showed you earlier on, the human eye is perfectly capable of adjusting to up to one million against one, even further, according to, according to some people, some experts. The problem is that the whole emerging chain that we have designed doesn't work th that way and is not capable of capturing as much dynamic range, uh, not talking about the famous and aging JPEG format that constrains you anyway into eight bits per channel. So the question is, again, how do we make those scenes that you capture look as you saw them when you took them uh, instead of having you mess up with tools and, 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 and sliders and becoming an expert and spending an average of five to ten minutes per shot? And how, we do we, how do we make that easier in other situations? So now it's time for me to talk about incense and what we do and what we plan to do. Uh, we plan to take over the whole area of dynamic range optimization in both still imaging and video. For those of you who saw the tiny booth in the entrance, there is a video running that I'll be happy to comment. Uh, I'll, get that to, I'll get back to that later. And so what we do to images again is this, bring back the lights without touching the color balance. We do that in a very different manner than everybody in the industry is doing. And this is why we have so different results, uh, both in terms of simplicity, there is just one click. As some people like control, we have one slider so that you can adjust the level, but basically it's one click. The quality, uh, no shift in the color balance, quality being validated by several professional photographers. Uh, and so the assurance for you that even if the exposure was varying in the scene you took, the appearance of what you took will remain. And this is what we call eye fidelity. Uh, and last but not least, speed. We claim to be 10 to 15 times faster than any algorithm around, just because what we have done here is formulated as a rigorous mathematical optimization of lighting parameters. There is no heuristic, there is no attempt to relight the dark zones and to darken the light zones and to, uh, and to fight with the artifacts. And this is why we deliver no halo, no artifact compared to any other tool. Uh, and last, uh, last point to mention, uh, we do that with a total independence on the bit depth, uh, meaning that what we, apply, what, what, what we can apply to relight uh, JPEG images will be equally uh, usable in high dynamic range imaging as well as in low bit depth type of displays. Um, again, we do that only when it's needed, so meaning that when a picture doesn't need relighting, we don't change it. Actually, if you look very carefully, you still can see more details on the tree up here, but the overall scene and the overall exposure hasn't changed. On the bottom image, of course, there's much more work that is needed. It is the same algorithm, the same parameters that get to that result. So why that? Why do we do that and why do we think this is the moment? Because we've seen images everywhere. I mean, comments earlier on and, and all, 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 all the, the previous speakers were, were, were eloquent about that. Images are everywhere. People produce lots of images. Some of you know now that uh, 70 million pic pictures are uploaded to Facebook every day. Uh, and people start to realize that their pictures are telling about themselves. And so that they, but they, they shot better. I mean, it would be better to upload good pictures because it will, it will tell more about how good you are how great the situations you, uh, how great was the landscape and how great you as a photographer. So people are starting to want a better quality. The problem is that they don't have time and they will more and more uh, derive from the traditional scheme where you take pictures with your camera or with your iPhone or whatever, you go back home, you plug, you import, and then you start Photoshopping. And so the first picture goes right the second takes 10 minutes, so it's less right because you have 100 left. And then on the third one, you're called for dinner. And you realize, and this is how in most digital picture libraries, I bet that no more than 5% of images are processed or have been touched. Yeah.